Thank you, Willem, and welcome to everyone from a sunny Port Elizabeth here in South Africa. Mlungisi and Kelly are joining me. Mlungisi is in the hills of KwaZulu-Natal, and Kelly is here in Port Elizabeth as well. We don't have much time, so expect this to fly by. I will start sharing my screen. So our session is titled Becoming an Open Education Influencer, the Nelson Mandela University Student Advocates Experience of Opening Up in Collaboration. Open Education Influencers or OEs, and you can say this out loud, OEs, are ambassadors for open who increase awareness of open education resources and open education practices. OEs facilitate the adoption, creation, and the licensing of OER. Open Ed influencers energetically advocate for the use of open textbooks across purpose, faculties, and school. Always do. They don't just say. So the Open Education Influencers aim is to empower people, and remember you are people, to activate their goals by doing something about achieving them. Bowie is that vehicle. Bowie stands for becoming an Open Education Influencer. Bowie project aims to contribute towards the sustainable development goals in whatever capacity or space. It's not just about education, by enabling advocacy through an online empowerment course. Some of our 2020 made during lockdown activities as always, um, well, you can go out and have a look at these uh, videos, these advocacy materials. Each of the images is hyperlinked, so click on them. Our presentation is under our OEG Connect um, page. Kelly, over to you. My road to being an open education influencer started when I applied for a writing respondent position, but stepped into an OE position. At first, we were a team of three called the Open Ambassadors. On our first day, we were told that we were the first open ambassadors in Africa. We had no idea what this meant or what open education was about, but this journey was exciting to us from the start. Later, we became the OEs when brainstorming for a name for the Bowie course. Over to Mlu. And my name is Mlungi C. Beginning of the year, I was working as a first mentor in our orientation program at Nelson Mandela. That's why I was supported by our project leader, Gino, who then presented me with the opportunity to become an OE. Um, when I joined the team, I did not know what open education was or anything related to it, but working with the team, I had soon got an understanding of what it is and I had established my role in the team and I've been learning from them, from the team and receiving great support from them. Thank you. The first OE team was recruited in 2018. I was lucky enough to be one of those members. The team included Samaya Defala, Kirsty Mayer, and myself. Next slide, 2019, we had an additional team member, Nomawetu Matiobeni. She was fortunate enough to attend OE Global last year in Italy. And in 2020, we had two additional team members, Mlungi Siumlongo and Hintamesha Maseka. Mlu will share a bit about our training experience in the next slides. Uh, the first OE training was an application. Anything we do not know, we had to research. An example of this is open licensing. And also as part of our training, we had to take the Commonwealth of Learning course that happened earlier this year before the lockdown happened. Contribution to the Bowie course started with brainstorming appropriate modules for the course, sourcing openly licensed content for each module, conducting practical research, which included participating in online open courses, sorting through content and developing a structure for the modules, script writing for media clips, which was new to both Mlungisi and I, and collaborating online both locally and internationally. So before lockdown began, we, we began with the creation of the boy development cars. Um, next slide, please. We had a timeline for the carrying out of this task. 
um, which was hugely, hugely based on normal face-to-face -face engagement. But when lockdown happened, we were then presented with a new challenge of now having to shift from working in the office to doing everything online. And this included, um, as we see on the next slide, it included um, doing media production, continuing online collaborations with the other contributors from UMS, and also writing script for our voiceover artist. And now we're on the final stretches of the OE cause and as you maybe heard on our Monday session that um, we have a module that is done at Workcase and you can see our contact details towards the end if you wanna take the course. Um, of course, moving to an online um, collaboration had challenges and maybe can we go first sharing her challenges? Uh, some of the challenges I experienced with online collaboration was that the course suddenly had many contributors. This made it difficult to follow the progress of course development. Knowing my role among so many other people who had more experience was also challenging. And keeping up with meetings in a home setting with many disruptions from family and pets, and I'm sure everyone can relate to that one. Next slide. Um, my biggest challenge was connectivity. Um, for me, this was and still is sometimes a challenge because I'm in the rural areas and here the poor network coverage is really bad. And sometimes I would miss meetings and deadlines to a point that I would sometimes break some of the lockdown regulations and go out to the main road because it's in the upper hill so that I would find coverage and be able to receive emails, be responsive and you know, no other tasks that I had to do. And also having to turn my home into an office was also a challenge because yes, I'm in the rules and you know the neighbors, the kids would make noises. So I'd have to find quiet spots sometimes outside the house so that I can find some time and quiet to take videos and everything. But the way we made collaborations. You yeah, you can shoot. Okay. Um, what made online collaboration easier for me was the support from the team. Video recording came with a lot of stress, but Phil, our producer, helped us relax before recordings and gave us helpful advice. I found that home was a more comfortable environment for filming, despite disruptions from family members and pets in the house. Um, support from family was also a great help, especially with the filming process. Uh, I even had them aid in doing hair and makeup and they were very patient with filming and all my bloopers. Next slide. Um, over here, we can see some of the filming tips that Phil shared with us before recording. And now over to Mlu. Um, what made online collaborations easier for me? Um, firstly, I had to change Netflix services provider for a better network coverage and also receiving internet data support from our project leader, Mr. Jenna Franzman. Um, as also Kelly has mentioned, our producer, Mr. Phil, also assisted us with tips on how to produce quality videos, even though we're doing it from our home setting. And support from family, they even attended some of the meetings with Phil, who was giving us tips on how to take these videos so that they would assist me to make sure that some of these videos were in good quality. Other benefits of the Bowie project online collaboration include maximum utilization of resources. For us, this meant people, mentorship, being innovative about getting past challenges. Um, online collaboration demanded, demanded resilience and dedication, which is a skill that we will carry on to other tasks and projects. Experience in course development, including content search, creating activities and assessments and promoting the course. Working with a wealth of skilled people was also a great benefit. We learned a lot from everyone on the team. We also learned punctuality and navigating Google Docs because this was new to both Mdu and I. Um, we are so fortunate being part mm -hmm. of Bowie, an international project that will reach thousands of people. Uh, next slide. So from my side, I think that a message that we want to get across to people is visit openedinfluencers.mandela.ac.za. Um, our intention today is to help you start making your move in open 
or advocacy with Bowie. We say use the content, spread open and make change real. This is a list of the contributors to the course and to our project. Um, it's an exhaustive list. So it's spanning three years at Mandela University, but so much longer in my own career history. So just a note of thanks to the organizers of OE Global 20. We'd like to express our heartfelt thanks to OE Global for the opportunity to have participated in the OE Global 2020 conference. We've not only networked with contributors from around the world, but also gained access to an incredible wealth of information from the best in the field of open education and just education. This conference made it possible for us to continue growing and advancing in our efforts to change the world for the better through open. We'd like to give special thanks to the organizers of the conference and the workers behind the scenes, many of whom haven't come out from the shadows, but their efforts are what enables us to be here and try to influence you. It's fantastic for pulling together such a wonderful event during a global pandemic. On behalf of the Open Ed Influences here at Mandela University, we'd like to congratulate you on hosting a successful, well-planned and enjoyable conference. And finally, I want to thank all the participants that connected with us. It's through you that we will help to open things up. We leave the conference enriched, encouraged, and hopeful for a better world of open education for our learners and teachers. And thank you so much to Selwyn Mulgrew for being a constant source of support for us, for the team, and for colleagues at the university trying to open up. Thank you, our social media Details are here below. Willem, I think it's fair to say that we've done well with time. So over to you for questions. Thank you uh, very much. And, 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 and a very thank you for the, for the conference, but also thank you for your, your, your fabulous presentation and, and the great work you're doing with the Open Influences. I think it's a great project and I see a lot of compliments in the chats from, from everyone. Uh, and I'm looking at questions. So if you have any question, please post them in the in the chat. Um, until now, I only saw compliments. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, amazing project. Very very interesting. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm inspired by you all. You show what is possible. You have done amazing work. Uh, so what's next is the question. Okay, so um, I think that our intention here has been to empower. And um, in order to empower, we needed a vehicle to do so. Kelly and Lungisi were empowered by helping us to create an empowerment vehicle. So we need to share and we need to expand the reach of not just the open ed influencers, but becoming an open ed influencer, the online empowerment course. So take a look at um, our session on Monday and find out how you as an educator or professional in an academic or other um, sort of development or uh, work setting can start to harness what we've, what we've put together and use it to develop advocates who are able to take your message and I think the greater good of the SDGs out and actually start contributing to those intentions by action and not just speaking about action, but actually going out and trying to influence decision makers, decision making, and the space that you find yourself with. And there's another question. What, what would be your advice for someone who would like to re replicate your model? Okay, so I'm going to answer this because I think that it, it speaks to the licensing um, convention that we've chosen. It's CC by share alike. Um, we chose this because we'd like people to use the content. This curation isn't something that we'd like to just put onto a website and leave dormant. No, it is to actually activate action um, through it being used in other spaces. Um, so please do reach out to us and um, yeah, engage with us about how we can help you to, to use what we've put together. Kelly and Lungisi are here. Um, they'll be here next year. We are excited to help others. Um, at Mandela University, our first year students will be taking the course. The how-to buddies will be taking the course. These are facilitation, um, facilitators of um, other students entering the system. So they'll all be empowered to engage with open, but we have six modules and those are open, Ubuntu, 
advocacy, influencing, facilitation, and then the SDGs to place them in a global context. Okay, great. Other questions? I see that, oh, yeah. Matilda writes, your work has certainly inspired me. Proud to be a member of Nelson Mandela University. So I think you did a great job. And that's, that is, that's the whole idea about, uh, I think this project is, is to inspire and, and, and others. And I think you, you've done that here today in our conference. And then I hope you can continue to uh, that work. So uh, thank you very much. And then uh, I don't see any new questions coming up. Uh, so uh, final words from, also from you. I think I'd like to give final words over to Kelly and Lungisi. Lungisi, would you like to start? <laughs> <laughs> I expect <it. laughs> Okay, um, I really, really love to like thank the opportunity to be part of this conference this year. It has been a great inspiration learning to, and, and learning about what others are doing. Um, yesterday, there was a presentation from students in Canada. So it was great inspiration to learn that they're also doing something in the open space. And we hope that this collaboration and connections will also grow and next year we'll, we'll meet again and do more in open, reach out and reach more people and you know advocate, influence. Kelly? <laughs> okay, um, I would just like to give a special thanks to the team from UMass Amherst. Uh, we learned a lot from the team over there and we look forward to working with them next year again, hopefully. Uh, and again, thank you to Gino for having us as open education influencers and giving us this opportunity to present internationally. Thank you so much. That's it for me. And you know, I'd just like to say a final thank you to both Kelly and Lungisi. Um, it, it's, a, it's an example of perseverance and um, just fortitude in a time of pandemic and stress. And they have risen to the challenge and I couldn't be prouder. So great job, everybody. All right, thank you very much. We can stop the recording.